Welcome, shall we observe the sun? Starting off today with this, solar flare classification chart, showing the last 24 hours of solar flares, and thus far the sun has produced four, M-class flares, with one being an M7, 24 class. On this HMI intensity gram map, there are five sunspot regions on the Earth-facing side of the sun today. Regions 3089, and 3088 are most active and producing, most all the flares observed in the last 24 hours. On this SDO131 filter the flares can be observed, as they repeatedly occur one after the other. Toward the end of this clip, you will see two huge flares that are in the M class. Using this LASCOC2 filter, two CME can be observed erupting on the right side of the sun. This coronal hole map shows a large hole on the southern side of the sun, which is Earth-facing. Up next, is the same coronal hole which can be seen on this SDO211 filter, with sunspot region, 3086 strangely inside this area. Like an eye looking back at us. Auroras on Jupiter. This week, NASA released the first James Webb Space Telescope images of auroras on Jupiter. The red rings of light circling Jupiter's poles were big enough to swallow Earth. But Jupiter's auroras are more than just oversized versions of our own. They are formed in a completely different way. One of the key ingredients is volcanoes. So much for space weather, solar activity is not required. For the most part, Jupiter makes its own northern and southern lights. It does this by spinning, like crazy. Jupiter turns on its axis once every 10 hours, dragging its giant planetary magnetic field around with it. Spinning a magnet is a great way to generate a few volts. Solar wind and CME can also help. However, solar storm clouds are naturally weakened by the time they travel all the way to Jupiter, five times farther from the Sun than Earth. Also, Jupiter's powerful magnetic field forms a potent shield. Io is already inside Jupiter's defenses, so it can be more effective. And as always, sit back, relax, and let me keep my eye on the Sun for you.